الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا ما يحده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار As we come to tonight's topic about natural disasters because unfortunately for these people everything just happens to be just a mere coincidence or a natural disaster every time a natural disaster takes place they begin to either highlight this is possibly a mishap, a misjudgment or a miscalculation that is the way that many non-Muslims and maybe possibly even some Muslims are beginning to perceive the various calamities, the various trials and tribulations that we're facing on a daily basis. So firstly, just to understand the mindset of the, the non-Muslims and how they perceive things, just some facts and some figures about the way they recognize natural disasters to possibly help us to understand that are we beginning to slip into falling into the same mindset that these people have? Is there any real distinction between what we visualize and what they visualize? Or have we become a people, as the hadith mentions, مَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ Whoever imitates a people eventually becomes like them. So we find that the essence of Islam has a deep focus of belief that whatever befalls the mu'min, the believer, whatever is taken, whatever is given, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the key element. It isn't because you upset someone, you took away someone's right, or you stepped on someone's grave, or you said something about a saint or something that took place, or you turned your back to the Qibla, these superstitious beliefs that we find. These are superstitious beliefs that have fallen into our creed, into our heart and our mind, via what these people perceive about the dunya. So thus you find for them the mishap, Apollo 13, the famous space shuttle that went into space, was given the name the Challenger. So firstly understand the name. Apollo 13, when it traveled into space, was given the name the Challenger. Who are you trying to challenge? And thus the Quran mentions, that oh you mankind and jinn, you're not going to be able to penetrate into the heavens except for via the Sultan, the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are now challenging God by going into the heavens that we can break through the heavens and get closer that if there is a God what they may perceive and what they may think that there is no God is their belief. But you know what happened to Apollo 13, the challenger? It was destroyed. So whenever a person begins to make challenges, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings about what they may think as natural disasters, but to send out a lesson. When Ayrton Senna, the famous Brazilian Formula 1 Grand Prix racer, champion 1980 and 90, whenever 91 as well, he said, I've been designed not to come sec third or second, I've been designed to win. I've been programmed to win. I don't think God will ever kill me on the track. I'm too damn good. In Molo, Italy, 1994, Ayrton Senna died on the track. He died on the track. For them, it's just a mishap. Titanic. The sink in the Titanic that you find 1912. What did they say? This is a ship which is unsinkable. This ship cannot sink. 
But what happened on his first voyage? Miscalculation, mishap, misjudgment. We do not see the iceberg. Of course you can't see the iceberg. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed that you're not going to see the iceberg. Then when it did hit the iceberg, it cracked in half. So it just didn't sink, it cracked in half. The unsinkable Titanic. The great ship. Something to think about. For these individuals, and likewise Muslims as well. When a Japanese built a bridge, they said this bridge is earthquake proof. That even if an earthquake comes, then there's no way this bridge will collapse. Either zulzilatil ardu zilzalaha. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shakes the earth, you know what happened to the bridge? It collapsed. But you know the Japanese, what they're good for the technology, isn't it? Go back to the drawing board. Miscalculations. We miscalculated the fractions. So that's why it collapsed. Damn fools. Can't you calculate that who sent this destruction upon you? Because you're challenging God. But for them it's a mishap, misjudgment, miscalculation. That's what it, they fall into the trap. Everything that's shown to them, they fall into this trap. Are we falling into exactly the same trap? Well maybe I shouldn't have taken that right turning. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have done this. Maybe you should have done that. Maybe we could have done this. Maybe you could have done that. But there's no maybe. You can do maybe whatever you want to do. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is destined that something is going to take place, or you're going to have the audacity to challenge the Creator. And when people have that audacity, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show them that you cannot challenge the Creator. You cannot give yourself the title, the challenger, the unsinkable, the undestructible. You cannot have such titles you can give. Man has been designed to show his weakness. That's the essence of the human being. Man is weak. Man has been created in a state of weakness. That weakness makes him recognize the Creator, makes him recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The weakness doesn't make him become arrogant and begin to think he's tyrannical. Because as we began with, whatever we possess, whatever we own, is a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heavens around us, the earth, everything. That's the Quran mentions, سَنَرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّوْ الْحَقِّ We show them our signs all around them. In the horizons, around the horizons. Till they can recognize this is the truth. In other passage of the Quran, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ We show you our signs within your own selves. Why can't you recognize? Why can't you visualize? أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنِ وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجَدَيْنِ Have we not given you two eyes? Have we not given you two lips? Have we not given you a tongue? The human being in the realms of the world of falsafa is classified as hayawan al-nātiq, the speaking animal. In the world of philosophy, all of us are animals. That's how they distinguish that everything, the creation is animals. But the preference of this animal over those animals is that we speak. We have a language, al-lamahu al-bayan, al-fasaha, al-balagha. The ability to speak, to express ourselves. And then we have this, the lob, al-aql, the mind. The mind raises the individual to a supreme level, to becoming the best of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Man becomes the best individual, the best of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he recognizes the Creator via these external signs. And that's the Quran mentions. Ayatin mufassalat. Some people shown signs after signs after signs. Wa in yara kulla ayatin la yu'minu biha. We keep on showing you signs after signs after signs after signs. La yu'minu biha. They still don't believe in them. Is that the type of people that we've become? That we see signs after signs after signs, but somehow we still think that doesn't concern me. 
Quran says, Awala yarawna annahum yuftanuna fi kulli aamin marratan aw marratayn, thumma la yatubuna wala hum yadhakkaroon. Don't you see? We test you once or twice in a year. Why don't you repent? Why don't you pay heed? That's the Quran addressing us towards the end of Surah Tawbah. Why don't you reflect? Every single one of his tested once or twice in a year. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا صَابَتُمْ مُصِيبًا قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ We're going to test you with some loss. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say all loss. Doesn't say everything you'll be lost. Some loss of your wealth, your property, your fruits, your lives. Give glad tidings to those individuals. When they face a loss, a calamity, they say to Allah we belong and to Allah we return. Thus you find as-sabr, as-sadmatul ula, the first time your calamity comes upon you, the person thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the calls of jahiliyyah that you still find in our culture. Person dies. Why did God take him? He was too young to die. Didn't God choose somebody else to die? Women slapping their faces, scratching their faces, ripping their clothing. Calls of jahiliyyah still exist in our culture, in our practice. Look at when someone dies. Look at people become ballistic when somebody dies. Begin to question the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not their time to die. Who said it's not their time to die? وَلَنْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا وَاللَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Who are you to challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Your ajal comes, your time of death comes, that's it, finish, you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَاعِكَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every single soul who tastes death. Whoever is saved from the punishment of the hellfire. وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازْ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءُ الْغُرُورِ Whoever is plucked out of Jahannam, thrown into paradise. That person is the most successful individual. That you find external factors around us. Whatever it may be, the natural disasters that we talk about. The earthquakes, the calamities. They are blessings in disguise for some people. That Allah subhanahu knows that now is the time to take these people. It may look gruesome. It may look difficult. But Allah subhanahu knows that take these young children today. Take their homes today. Before we have to face something difficult. That's for these people. You study the science of the hurricanes, the excessive hurricanes at the moment. The storms, the tornadoes. You know what these people are good for? A meteorologist in America, he started naming this Hurricane Gilbert and Hurricane George after people he didn't like. So you know the top hurricane when he came, named it? Saddam Hussein. He named the hurricane Saddam Hussein because he didn't like him. That's what it's for them. It's just a great big game for them. When they look and they analyze all these things, it's just a game. That's the way you see it. It's just the world is just a game. They haven't been programmed to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or it becomes an industry. Whether it be the day after tomorrow, Independence Day, the Titanic, whatever, it becomes an industry. Make a movie out of it. It shows money. And sometimes you begin to think, how can they depict such images? How do they depict such images? Where do they get this, such, such information from? There's been times I've been traveling, that some things have just come up to the top of the screen and I've visualized, and I think, what's going on here? I begin to feel scared. This is a picture of Jahannam. None of us have seen Jahannam. Now, how can they depict a man going into Jahannam? Taking golden bullets, melting golden bullets, taking them into a cross and killing people inside Jahannam. You can go and study and find out what the movie is. But I don't want to encourage the watching of movies. But when I saw the visual like this when I'm flying in a plane, I got scared. Now how do you know this depiction of hell? hell? Where did you create this depiction from? Because for them, it's just an image. For them, they know deep down inside their heart. There's no concept of a person being an atheist. Richard Dawkins' book, The God Delusion. They all believe in God. But they want to hide the fact. They want to highlight its external forces. It's mother nature. Those mother nature, nothing but kufr. That's what it is, kufr. These statements that we're taught, that mother nature brings it about, that the Muslim belief, everything comes from the permission of Allah. And Allah releases these things to take place. Inside Surah Al-Rum, the 30th chapter of the Quran, corruption has appeared upon the land and the oceans. You know why this corruption has appeared all around us? 
is because what we send forth with our own hands. And it may sound very, very harsh. And it's very, very harsh this may be. But many Muslim countries, the suffering that they're going through is because of the neglect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I don't want to spend too much time upon that. But some people may find that unfair. But many ulama have written about trials and tribulations. Like Ibn Abdul Salam and Andalusi writes about this deep factor as well that we need to ponder upon. That bring people back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what the Quran mentions to Quraysh, a whole surah named after Quraysh. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ Let them worship the Lord of this house. When you worship the Lord of this house, يعني Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will take away your hunger. And we will take away your fear. We will place you in a state of peace. Why are many of our Muslim lands not in a state of peace? Just answer this one simple question. Think about it. Who do they worship? Do they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'll tell you the answer. Because I lived many years. I've seen people bang down to graves. I've seen people asking the grave. Asking the dead person. Give me a son. Give me a daughter. Give me life. Give me wealth. These same practices will bring them even today in a civilized world. Go running to who? Go running to the sheikh. Go running to the peer. Grab his foot. Give him 10,000 pounds. Don't pray yourself. Don't bow down yourself. Don't bow down yourself, but let him bow down for you. He doesn't bow down for you, nor does he bow down for himself. Okay, get that right in your brain. He doesn't bow down, he builds his empire. He spends that money in his politics back home. And creates his entourage, his defense that he wants to create. But you've just been baffled all the time throughout your life. That those people come in front of you, plunder your wealth, take it away from you. You believe that these are the people that are going to help us to get into paradise. Not even the Prophet Muhammad was going to help you to get into paradise. When a man asked him a question, I want to be with you in paradise. I want to be with you in paradise. She so said, help yourself, aid yourself. Min kasrat is sujood, by doing excessive praying. Praying on the graves, praying on the feet of people, or bowing down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what you've been told to do in your life. Submit to the Creator, move away from these evil practices, and you will see the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the people of village they believe, they have taqwa, you know what will happen? The heavens will rip open, the earth will rip open, and the blessings will come out for you once again. That's how simple, there's no, there's no technical solution. If you're thinking about technical solution about infrastructure, there's no technical solution. We are simple nomadic Bedouin people, that's what we are. There's no technical solution. Technical solution may help to a certain degree. The real solution is this. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bring that back into the life of these people. That they need to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only a matter of time. We shouldn't be full of, full of ourselves thinking that no, the punishment won't come upon us. It's only a matter of time. That's what the ulama mentioned was known as al-istidraj. That know for a fact when people are enjoying the dunya, people are enjoying the dunya and they don't have no focus towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is released. Because some of us we think, oh, person's got dunya, they're not tested. That must be the way of life. That's incorrect understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala releases the rope. Leaves them to go and carry on enjoying and enjoying. And then we take them, baghtatan. Then all of a sudden, we snatch them back. Wahum la yash'urun. They cannot even perceive it. So don't fall into the trap thinking, oh, you know, the, the non-Muslims enjoy the world and this person enjoys the world. It's only a matter of time. That when Allah takes, then that's it. That he's taking is a severe taking. Allah subhanahu wa is severe in his punishment. Because too many of us, our culture is Allah is Rahim. Isn't it? That's all of us we think, isn't it? 
Do whatever haram you want to do in your life. Allah is tawab, He forgives, He pardons, He accepts repentance. But go and read through in detail the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa lillahi al-asma al-husna. Read the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And amongst them you find the tawazan, the balance. That when he talks about his mercy, he talks about his punishment. He talks about his forgiveness. He talks about his snatching. He talks about his pardoning. And he talks about not releasing those people. So just balance it all out. Don't just go towards one degree and leave the other degree. That's the stance of Ahl al-Sunnah is to take the correct understanding of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To not reject, reject any one of them. As we mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the stance of Ahl al-Sunnah. In order to make any ta'wil, or tahrif, or tabdeel, or taqeef of any names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ahriha. Upon their apparent meaning, Ahl al-Sunnah take them. That's the stance. But we can see that these corrupt beliefs once again. When you begin to not call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the pristine, orthodox manner. Take this parable. Take this parable. If you today begin to call upon someone in a rude way, you begin to chant their name, you begin to sing their name, you begin to trance in their name, you begin to sing a song in their name. Is that person going to tolerate from you? Are they going to tolerate it from you? And that's what you do with the blessed names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From Allah, it becomes what? Who? 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 From there it becomes <clears throat> blind through your nose. That's the reality. Go and sit in the circles. And they think this is respect towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is respect towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pure pantheism. Wahdatul wujud. Becoming one with the creator. This is revival of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Challenges people openly. One hadith. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said who in his life. One hadith. And for the rest of my life I'll do it until the day I die. I'll do it until the day I die. Not one hadith. Not one hadith that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa extracted this. Not you extract it from the Quran. Who are you to extract it from the Quran? Extract the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa extracted it. And he told his companions to do it. And he encouraged his companions to do it. Did they do it in their life? So you turn away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends out the message. Begin to make that journey back to my deen. And likewise the other fitr and facade that we find. If you begin to take that. You begin to deal in usury. You take the tails of the cows. You become happy with this land cultivation. And you leave striving and struggling away of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Sunnah of Abi Dawood, if I'm not mistaken, the disgrace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never ever be lifted from you until what? You don't return back to your deen. Look at these four concepts. These three concepts. Awalan, إِذَا تَبَايَعْتُمْ بِالْعِينَ عِينَ نَوْءٌ مِنَ الْرِبَى أَنْوَعٌ مِنَ الْرِبَى Type of riba that you find. Is not every single Muslim involved in riba today? Are they not involved in riba? There's only one place in the Quran. The Quran talks about numerous kabair, numerous sins it talks about. You do this, you do this, you do this, stay away from this, fajtanibu, stay away from that. Hurrima alaykum, this is haram upon you. Wala taqrabu, don't do this, stay away from that. That's the general nature of the Quran, but only one sin inside the Quran. Whoever enters into riba, enters into usury, then know that Allah and His Messenger have declared war on that person. You know people say to us, oh we're at war with America and we're full and we're at land. We're in war with Americans here and these people there and those people there. Put that on the side, that's just a concept of war, okay? That's a concept of war that people get emotional about. The real war that you're with is against Allah. That's the real war. Those are the secondary tertiary wars that Allah allowed to take place to wake us up. The real war that we are entering upon, you are in war 
I am at war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. That's what the real war that we're living in. Because you don't find hardly any homes. Every other home is based upon what? Based upon riba. And may Allah forbid, there's masajid who even flamboyantly display their riba, their bank statements on the masjid wall that we borrowed this from the masjid. How wretched can you be? Even the Quraysh when they built the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said bring your pure wealth to build the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quraysh mushrikun, najas, impure, filthy individuals. They said if you build the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't bring any wealth contaminated with haram. Any wealth contaminated with riba. Today what is it for us? Just slip 50 pound more be subhan, hand, no problem, don't ask. Don't ask whether it's halal or haram. Just do a little dua for me, isn't it? You do dua for me, that's it. Don't ask the question, is it halal or is it haram? We let's not enter into that world, it doesn't concern us. But that brings about your destruction. That brings about my destruction, that brings about the destruction of this Muslim Ummah. Like when you begin to take the tails of the cows. How many Muslims, that's all they're worried about. And the land, the cultivation, their businesses. You know, my business will suffer. If I go to read namaz, I go to read salah, I lose a couple of customers. Isn't it? That's what they're saying, I lose some customers. Before you even came into existence, Allah subhanahu wa legislated, this is what your life is. Inna salata kanat al mu'minina kitab mawquta. Prayer has been prescribed for you at set times. And I pass it and blame it upon some of us, our own clerics as well. This qaza that you find, I don't understand where this qaza comes from anyway. Qaza that you find in Islam, isn't I'm living in the West. I can just skip my prayers because I'm, I'm working around non-Muslims. I go home and I pray. And I pray them in one go. I had people with me, who of Quran, teaching Quran. Brother, let's pray our salah. I'm wearing a pair of jeans, I can't pray. You're Imam of the Masjid, you're Imam of the Masjid. I go home and I pray my Dhuhr, my Asr, because we did and Maghrib, and Isha. In 7.5 minutes. And then I teach the children. What are you teaching the children? What are you teaching the people? Namaz God, Qaidani, no problem. Kazakallah. What do you mean Kazakallah? Who said that? Which books of Fuqaha? Qada has been legislated at set times for set specific reasons. When those reasons exist, those, then that rukas comes into play. Other than that, where does it say? I'm working with a non Muslim. The water might be napak. Can't do wudu. Can't bow down there. Who says that? It's impure. The Prophet Muhammad said, I've been given five things. Amongst those five things, the whole of the earth is what? It's tahir, it's pure. The whole of the earth is pure. Unless something clearly shows it's contaminated. The essence is pure. You pray on the earth. Something proves it's contaminated, then you move away. But no, the cultural practice. I used to pray back home. Now, pray on the mother for us back home. Isn't it? I was the one thing back home. When you come here, you see the red passport, isn't it? You see the visa, isn't it? Me now can't read the mass. Now, when I'm not passing the visa, I'm not going to see. Isn't it? Passport, I'm not going to see. Isn't it? So, what do you come here for? That shows our lack of iman, isn't it? That's what, we That's what we revolve around. The dunya. I lose something out of the dunya. You lose your iman. Isn't it? Ali Junior's pictures there. He had a famous Dutch proverb he used to say. Think about the rest of his life. It's a famous Dutch proverb that he twisted around. If your deen is lost, everything is lost. Money is lost, nothing is lost. Honor is not lost, much is lost. Because he twisted it around from the, du- from the Dutch proverb. Because they said that if money is lost, all is lost. So that's what's happened to Pakistan today. If money is lost, what's lost? All is lost. The Prophet Muhammad is blasphemed. Koigani. That's why man got gunned down, isn't it? That's why he got gunned down. Because they want to abuse the blasphemy law. 
It's sad he got gunned down. It's sad he got shot in that way. It is truly sad. But there's going to be some late, crazy individuals out there who think that this man saying open words of kufr, so the man needs to go by the gun. He needs to be moved out of his position. Because how dare he blaspheme against the Sharia. But anyway, every day we're blaspheming. Every single day we're blaspheming. We may not think we're blaspheming, we may not visualize it. But we are blaspheming on a daily basis. That we have to remind ourselves. That's the Quran mentioned that some people, they have what? They may have eyes, they may have bodies, they may have everything. But they don't have, their hearts are blind. When your heart becomes blind, then that's it. Don't worry about if you physically get blind, if you physically get blind, the person who has suffered as patience, that reward for that person will be nothing less but paradise. But when your heart becomes blind, When your heart becomes sealed, ran, this covering, this iron dust comes over your heart. Your heart becomes sealed. Then you can't see what is good in front of you. You can't even see what is evil in front of you. It's all tainted. That's the rust that is on our hearts. That we need to remove that rust. To visualize that the calamities that befall us that begin to take a place upon us. As so many people may think that why are those innocent children we mentioned? Why are they harmed? Why are their lives taken away? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the most immense wisdom. And wisdom belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He does whatever He wants subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's not asked about what He does. He's not asked. No one can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they'll, be, they'll be asked. No one can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you do this? Why did you do that? Why did you send this? How do you send that? Why did you decide to do that? No one can ask that question. The Muslim, the believer can only submit and begin to think, how can I prevent this happening again? What steps can we take? What can we encourage our people? And at the same time, the positive, that doesn't mean that we should be neglectful of what the brothers, the various charities, the brothers are doing. We're not questioning them. We're not saying anything. That is something, it becomes a pivotal role. That in that help of helping other people, you are actually helping yourself. You're not going to attain piety. Piety isn't just praying, isn't just fasting, it's spending of the things that you love. Whoever removes the greed from himself, that is a successful individual. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to purify us. Purify our wealth. Purify our iman. Purify our intentions. Pur- purify our life. Then to eventually the mu'min, everything that a person goes through is purified until they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a purified state. That's what these young children will be. They're ma'asum. They haven't done anything wrong. They'll meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a purified state. Those women who guarded their chastity, their honor, their dignity, taken away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be given a reward that we can't imagine. Our words cannot contemplate or even express the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will return to those individuals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unjust. That's another lesson that we need to understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unjust to any individual. The vul comes from us that we begin to become ungrateful and oppress ourselves, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to make up that wake up call. Has to then encourage us once again, that come back to the track, come back to the devotion, come back to the life. Begin to, that's what you find ulama, they mentioned by opposites, the truth is recognized. If there wasn't kufr, we would not really appreciate what is iman. If there wasn't poverty, we wouldn't really appreciate what is wealth. If there wasn't sickness, we wouldn't really appreciate what is health. So via opposites, the truth becomes clear. So whatever this is around us, or maybe what we may think away from us, it's something for us that we claim to be the smart individuals, the more intellectual individuals. Then those signs for us should make us excel even more. 
or trying to become a better individual. A better individual, firstly, with one's relationship towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then secondly, your relationship towards the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Then thirdly, towards the rest of the, the believers that we find, the companions. And then, the wider society. That is the role of this Muslim Ummah. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ You're the best people ever raised up. You order the good and you forbid the evil. What is ordering the good? وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Encourage one another towards piety and goodness. Don't encourage one another towards bad actions, corruption, enmity, hatred, haram things. Bring yourself towards goodness. Make turuk al khairat, doors of goodness, of entering yourself into paradise, of doing good actions. Wealth is one of the most easiest ways the person can give to enter into paradise. But once again, the obstacle is that greed, that lust, that desire. The person needs to break that. That's you find that many people who have that wealth, Allah subhanahu wa blesses them with wealth. Why do you think at times Allah subhanahu wa blesses them with more? That's what you may think that at times, that, you know, some of the people say, look, why are the Arabs going you know, use expression? Why are they filthy rich? Why are they filthy rich? Oh, the essence goes back to the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that raised among these people and give them a blessing, the thamarat, the fruits, and that many of the people could have, what are these fruits given to them? The black gold has been given to them. That's the fruits that's been given to them. But leaving that aside, that some of these people, you have to be fair, you have to be just. Idiluhu aqrabu li taqwa. They. In their karam, their generosity, at time, if the word is correct, has no limits. Their generosity has no limits. So does that them amongst them who are generous, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even more generous to them. And knows that this servant of mine, the more I bless him, the more he gives. The more he gives, the more I give. The more he gives, the more I give. And I continue to give. That is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives to whomever He wants. So some of them have been given that blessing. We can't deny the fact. We've been a month and seen that blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon them. They give it. And they give it more. To such a degree, people have been seen this person says, You don't have nothing to give. No problem. Just give it. Just give it away. No problem. When they said those words, someone's come and given more wealth. Here's, here's wealth from such and such product. Here's such a wealth from such and such a deal that was taking place. Here's the wealth that I own you. And the wealth that's been given has been doubled what they've just given. I've even said, I even said that. Why are you giving it away for? Don't ask. Allah's given and Allah will give more. So that's why Allah will bless them at times. We're the people who become bukhala with our wealth, become stingy with our wealth. Always trying to save for a rainy day. I'm not saying don't save for a rainy day. Save for a rainy day. But we're, we're saving for a stormy day. That stormy day never comes. The only thing that comes is what? 31st of January is what? Inland Revenue Day, isn't it? Have you sent your paperwork off? Before they come knocking on your door and they take your, your wealth away from you? That's where it goes, isn't it? No barakah in our wealth. Study, you know, my father came here, we're Queen's Road, I think he's just down the road. My father told me he came here, I don't know when, in the 60s sometime. I've only walked back on this street. I said, I don't know, I've never been in this street before, it's second or third time in the street. And he told me, and he tells me, that we were 25 people living in a room. We were 25 people living in a room, and he said, I'll show you the house. Go to it, it's probably knocked down now, what door number it is. 25 people living in a room. We should eat from one plate. We should eat together. We should live together. We built the masjid together. We built the community together. We built places back home together. We built property together. There was so much barakah in our life. You my son, there's 250 of you in one room. You can't sit together. You can't build something together. You can't live together. You can't do anything back home together. You can't do anything together in this country. We couldn't speak English. We couldn't do anything. But we had some, what you may think, cultural pretense or cultural understanding. There was barakah in their life. 
Was it, was it not Barakah in their life? We had 25 people working in the home and we're still complaining. We're still complaining. We don't have the responsibility of taking care of the family back home. That family means what? You know what it means, don't you, back home? We can't do that. We can't do that today. Why not? Because there's no Barakah left. The Barakah has been snatched away, taken away from us. So how do you once again enter into the world of Barakah? How do you enter that world of gaining the blessings? We eat today, we eat to our full, we go home and we're still what? We're still hungry. Isn't it? We're still hungry, there's no Barakah. Our life, there's no Barakah in what we do in our life, nothing in our time, nothing. Remember, you read through their life. You calculate the work, you write read through the works of Imam Qutubi Tafsir, we could spend all our life reading with his Tafsir. We could still not be able to complete it, and even if we did complete it, I'm sure that nine, nine people out of ten, or ten out of ten, would not be able to understand his Tafsir. All our lives we could do that. You calculate how many minutes they had in their life. Some of them died at the age of 40. Age of 40, Imam Now we read for his seerah, age of 40. His majmu'ah, his, his fiqh, that was completed by Imam Subki at the later stage, the fiqh of Shafi'i that you find, that was completed some 30 odd volumes, are not mistaken. By the Shah of Sahih Muslim, 19 volumes. Died about after the age of approximately 40. Calculate their time. They didn't have electricity, they didn't have AC, they didn't have PAs around them. On like fancy libraries, they must have handwritten at least 40 to 50 pages a day. Handwritten. No, go try typing up a letter, isn't it? Type a letter, you say, oh, my fingers are hurting. 40 to 50 pages handwritten on a daily basis. They stopped and they prayed. They stopped and they fasted. They stopped and they performed Hajj. They stopped and they done Umrah. They done all the things that we're doing. But now we're the modern man. We're the iPad, aren't we? Quran is iPad, isn't it? Now that's what the Quran is, isn't it? iPad, isn't it? Everything iPad. Digital word. Makfatwa that we find. Pick up a book and read a book. No, just go to the internet, that's it. Do a Google search. Halal haram, that's enough for me. That's what Allah is. I'm fast world, that's it. Everything, fast world. You know what you want to go and learn? If you're going for your living, you go and earn your living, don't you? You get up early in the morning, earn your living. But when it comes to Islam, no, no, no time for that. Little hadith come on the computer, that's fine, that's enough for me. That, that gets me by, that's my, that's my contribution. That's me Muslim. One hadith of a day. That's my ritual practice. That's my barakah share. Isn't it? My 786. Written on my business. Isn't it? That's my 786. Isn't it? 786, doesn't it? 786, that's my barakat. I look at the protection. Rip them up, is what I say. Rip them up, brothers. Rip them up. Nothing but kufr. Digits. The Quran isn't digits. Who says the Quran is digits? Is the Quran squiggly lines? Is the Quran squiggly lines? Tell me that. Am I blaspheming against the Quran? Are these people blaspheming against the Quran? Who's blaspheming against the Quran? Writing a little squiggly line, put it on the wall. Walk in the shop, that protects me, my business. Damn hell, it protects your business. Boys wearing tawis, keep me away from haram. You're clubbing all night. Fornicate like an animal. And you saying to me, my mom put down my arm, protect me from evil. Mom put down my arm, stop me from being haram. You're blaspheming against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're blaspheming. No, I'm blaspheming. I'm not the mad wahhabi. You're the mad individual, spreading in your arms, fooling like an animal, drinking alcohol all night, and come and say to me, I wear a dawi, and protects me. I don't do the haram in my life. Who do you think I'm a type of cleric I am? Rip up the dawi, rip it open, and I guarantee to you, it will not be the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I guarantee you, rip it open from your arm, rip it open and read it. You can't read one clear word. One clear word from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you want to be listening to these people? This is protection for you. Tie a thread on your car. 
Tie a black thread in your hand and leave your exhaust like a Hindu, like a city. That's what they do for Baraka. Tie a thread in the bottom of their car. That's what you do now today? And you think that's your Muslim life? I had to kursi hanging in my car window. I had to kursi. Where does it say in the hadith? I had to kursi hang it on the window. I had to kursi read it and it will protect you from the shaitan. Read it when you go to sleep, not hang it on your on your window. That's what we become good for, isn't it? When you become good for that, that's the reality. That is the reality. That's what we become. People live our life on threads, on strings. And as we began with suspicions, black cat came in my way. Bad luck for me today. A black bull could come in your way, what would happen then? Black cat came in my way, Sheikh, what should I do? What type of life is this? What type of creed is this? What type of devotion is this? The thing, this is the same thing that Prophet also came to break apart, rip it apart. Ripped it apart and we're going back to a life of Jahiliyyah. Going back to a life of Jahiliyyah. Like I said, I've lived in these countries. I'm not one of those people saying, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Every other mind, you have to throw a dime. You have to flick a rupee. To who? So and so. To get to the other destination. This is what we become. This is our creed. This is our life. This is our devotion. This all needs to be uprooted from us. From our people, from our parents, from our children, from our community. It needs to be uprooted. There's no ifs and buts. There's no this fickle ikhtilaf, this difference of opinion. There's no different opinion about this. There may be different opinion where you place your hands, when you pray, how you say Amin or you don't say it. There may be different opinion that the ulama have allowed. But when it comes to Babul Aqa'id, when it comes to Aqidah, clear cut, finish. It's black and white. فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِحْتَدَعُوا You believe that they believe, you will be what? Rightly guided. That's it. Islam is simple. It is a simple way of life. That's what it is. Simple practices we have to do, and you find once again the blessings will return back. But we don't want to do even do the simple practices. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq and ability to come away and pray to Allah and remove these calamities ma bahara minha wa ma batal external and internal whatever the causes may be whatever the reason may be they are still our ikhwan they are brothers they are sisters they are daughters they are part of this Muslim ummah we should be worried we should be concerned about them concerned about our own selves and do whatever we can whatever we can to help these individuals if we cannot speak we cannot do physical action then at least I say we can do is pray in the depths of the night, whenever you have the opportunity, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're your poor servants. They're downtrodden, in a bad state. They're traumatized, they're being punished, they're being oppressed. Lift this calamity from them, Ya Rab. You're the kind, you're the merciful one. Don't be send them through these difficulties, obstacles. Bring them out of this oppression, bring them out of this hardship. Return them back to you in a state of faith, of commitment. Wipe out their sin, pardon them, forgive them. That's the least that we can do if we can't do any other action. At least we could do, when we visualize this and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside our hearts, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessings are so much upon us, and we can't seem to visualize so many blessings upon us, that every day we eat well, we dress well, we sleep well, we enjoy a good life. And every day these people, they go through every day and more suffering, and more suffering that they go through. They don't know when the end is. But wallahi, sometimes these words are easy in our tongue. But what do they say? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best wakil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best protector. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is the best protector. He's the best provider. He's the one that takes care of us. Everything is destroyed around, around them. But they're still giving what? Gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are people who become what? Ungrateful. Fadkuruni adhkurkum. Washkuru li wa la takfurun. Remember me and I'll remember you. Meaning remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember you. Give thanks to me. And don't be ungrateful. What is kufr? Kufr isn't just disbelief. Kufr is what? Juhud al ni'mah To reject the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa innahu ala thalika la shaheed. Man testifies that he rejects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he becomes ungrateful. So all of us at some stage, or maybe every single stage, are ungrateful. So the key element is return back to gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place these words inside our mizan of hasanat. And likewise, every single brother 
who lives with these words to become a better individual, anything good I've said has been nothing but a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything incorrect has been from my own interpretation, my own misunderstanding and the wisdom of shaitan. وَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِجَمِيلِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ النُّوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ سُبْحَانَكُمْ وَبِحَمْدِكُمْ شُبَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِلَّا أَنْ تَسْتَغْفِرُ وَتُو